email newsletters aren't new. They might be one of the oldest forms of digital mass communication. I certainly remember signing up for them in the late 90s when social media didn't exist yet, but they're back with a vengeance because they allow for something that got lost in the age of social media, direct and unmediated permission to follow up. There has been a resurgence of newsletters after decades of exploding social media followings. Social used to be the place to build an audience, but over the recent years, people have understood that not all audiences are equal. The boom of newsletters that we see reflects a reversion from rented audiences to earned audiences, from borrowed to owned. A borrowed audience is something fragile. Social media followers are an example of this. While network effects make it easier to quickly reach many people on these platforms, you are building on someone else's platform, which introduces uncertainty. An owned audience is something firm. The moment people allow you to reach them without an intermediary, your audience is built on much more stable foundations. So what's the reason for this newsletter resurgence? Well, it's platform risk. Whoever controls the email address owns the relationship. And with social media platforms owning everything, your account, your relationships, even your messages, really, marketers and entrepreneurs are starting to diversify their reach away from social. They know that having control over the experience and the means of communication makes their outreach efforts more resilient. And resilience is strongly needed in the current digital landscape. The social media algorithms that are feeding us tweets and Facebook posts, well, they change constantly. They've always been black boxes and have even destroyed people's livelihoods with minor changes. So privately owned algorithms, they're well-kept secrets and this cat and mouse game of trying to figure out how to win at Google search ranking, for example, in the SEO world, is a clear indicator of how resource intensive it can be to try and play along. No matter what social media platform you look at, you'll run into the same challenges. Too many people are posting too many things for your messages to find the people that you want to reach. You have no control over your distribution, and even though you may have hundreds or thousands of followers on Twitter, only a fraction of them will ever get to see your tweets. You can try to appease the algorithm, but it will barely make a difference. So what do people do if they can't impact the percentage of their following that gets to see their stuff? Well, they try to grow a following as much as possible to compensate. They spend money on in-platform ads to surface their content to prospective followers. And then, at some point, something happens. A technical glitch? A tweet that shouldn't have been sent? Something that gives Twitter the reason to suspend their account. And then everything is lost. All those followers, just gone. All those ad dollars spent for nothing. No legal recourse is possible either. When you sign up for a social media platform, you agree that you're on their turf, following their rules, which includes being able to suspend your account for any reason. They say, we may suspend accounts that violate the Twitter rules. That's the law of the land. Their rules to make, to interpret, and to enforce. The judge, jury, and executioner at the same time. Modern social media platforms are what Judge Dredd was to us cool kids back in the 90s. That audience you built on Twitter, that's just borrowed. Twitter is lending them to you. At best, if you're lucky, you've made an export of your Twitter data at some point, some kind of backup. But generally, you don't own anything on social media. A borrowed audience comes with a lot of benefits, though. It's easy to tap into. You can audition in front of established players' audiences and quickly find a following for yourself. Those network effects within the existing giant social graph they allow for quick scaling of your messaging. If it's good, people will amplify what you have to say and do it quickly. A social share is quick and easy and costs much less in reputation than an email forward would. The risks are also clear. If you need to go through someone's platform to reach your audience and platform access can be arbitrarily restricted, you're putting all your eggs in one virtual basket. You have no means to reach your audience in other ways. And that is why newsletters are gaining in popularity. The email list offers creators, founders, and marketers a way to de-risk their social media following. If you can get someone to give you their email address voluntarily, you establish a direct communication channel with them, unmediated by any social platform. You own your list, which makes your email subscribers an owned audience. When someone allows you to reach out to them directly, you receive privileges, and responsibility. 
You can send them messages at any time. And it's up to you to ensure that those messages are wanted and appreciated. Send too much and you risk them reporting your sender email address for spam. Send the wrong things and they'll quickly opt out of your list, removing your access to their inbox. Building an owned audience is all about responsibility. It's like home ownership. Suddenly, you're responsible for many things you never expected to even exist. For emails, you have to take care of SPF and DKIM authentication records on your domain to be able to use email sending services. You have to maintain list hygiene and you have to make sure that your sponsors are aligned with your audience. But it's worth it. Your list is yours. Every month, I manually export my email list from ConvertKit, that's the email provider that I use for my newsletter, and that means that no matter where I go with my list, even if I were to manually send an email to every single of my 5,000 subscribers, I could reach them without any intermediary. That's control and that's ownership. And that's also the reason why it's so hard to build an owned audience. Getting permission to follow up, that's much harder for an email subscriber than for a Twitter follower. Social media platforms make it very easy to follow someone as they make it easy to remove this connection as well. If you block me on Twitter, I can't see your tweets or ever talk to you again. This is not so easy once you hand over your email address to a newsletter operator. But before you knew that Twitter would act in your interest to keep your account from getting spammed, now you have to trust the person or the business that is sending you those emails. You have to hope that they honor your request to unsubscribe you from their list when you send it to them. And that trust needs to be earned, which is why owned audiences are often also called earned audiences. You earn the permission to follow up for as long as both you and them find the relationship valuable. No intermediaries. No one can revoke the relationship, but you or your audience member that you have the relationship with. Now for the aspiring creator, all of this means two things. A, you need to diversify your audience from a borrowed into an owned audience, and you need to put all your efforts B, into retaining the people who allowed you to follow up. By all means, start with a massive social following, try building that, and then leverage those network effects and powerful dynamics of the social graph. But don't forget that true ownership lies only in an email list. Build a following and build a list. Allow people to permit you to follow up. And don't forget to export your data regularly.